Hotel Nation, welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Now, one of the great things about the IM608 compared to other aftermarket scan tools, it's its ability to do extensive coding, putting on news modules and configuring it right from the tablet. Now, the challenge that most of us are facing is after we install that module, what do we do? What's the function route in order to get rid of that error code and it leaves us a lot of us scratching our head so what I wanted to share with you guys today is a simple framework that you can can be applied on to most Chrysler vehicles and which brings us to our training today what I'm going to be sharing with you is how to install a used PCM on a 2012 Chrysler town and country with the IM608 Pro for those who are new to the channel my name is Curtis Harden. I'm an Autel Diagnostic Consultant. I sell the tool and I also provide the support to the clients that you're going to be seeing in this video. Okay, so this is what you're going to be learning today by the end of this presentation. First, I'm going to share with you what tools and setup are required to do this particular procedure. Second, I'm going to cover some of the important terms Chrysler uh, has on these vehicles. Third, I'm going to identify the Chrysler Immobilizer System. This is going to be fun. Fourth, how to know which procedures that need to be done after a module has been replaced. And fifth, how to replace a PCM with the IM608 Pro. Now, this is what you're going to be needing, your Autel IM608 Pro, your used PCM, and your service information. Okay. So let's cover some of the important terms before we do this. Now, the donor module, okay? When you replace a PCM, make sure that the donor module has the same part number as the original, okay? I had some guys that'll try to get a year that's like earlier or you know later, and it, it tends to be problematic, okay? So make sure the part number is exactly the same, okay? Number two, if a donor module comes with a black key, it's a security key. If it's a gray key, it's a non-security key. So what's the difference? Well, a non-security key basically means when you turn on the car, it will not shut down after seconds because it does not have the pre-programmed security option embedded in it, okay? And to go a little bit deeper, you see when the car comes out the factory, some vehicles will have the security option configured in the BCM module, okay? As a result, the PCM will be synchronized with this security option as well and then for now on that PCM will only work with other vehicles that have that security option. So if you buy, let's say, a, uh, a black key that, you know, that has a security option on it and your vehicle has you know, a non-security option on it, your, the car is not going to start, okay? So just make sure if it's a black key for security, if it's a gray key, it's non-security, all right? Secret key. Now, secret key is an ID code that is unique to each WIN module. The code is configured in the WIN and the PCM, and it also is distributed to the keys as well. When you replace the PCM and the WIN module, you have to let's say configure the secret code to the new module with your Autel scan tool, okay? Fourth is PIN code. Now PIN code is just a four digit uh, number required to enter the security access mode in the WCM and WIN module. What you're gonna find is on most aftermarket scan tools, there's got a five digit number and it's just because there's different, it's on a different system, okay? It's the simplest way I can tell you. Now, the last thing is get the procedure from the OEM before servicing the vehicle. So before you go 
need to know, all right? You have to know what strategy to do when you're uh, putting on these modules. Now, let me introduce you to the Chrysler Immobilizer Systems, all right? We have the SKIM module, which SKIM stands for Century Key uh, Emo Module, and this is just a rough estimate, okay? It's not exact. It, you probably see these between 1998 and 2006. Now, the SKIM's job is basically to prevent unauthorized operations of, uh, of the vehicle by disabling the engine. Okay, it has a radio transceiver and it runs on a microprocessor. Okay, and this uh, particular module communicates over the PCI bus network. All right, now the rest of these, these are kind of the same. They have slight variations, but anytime a vehicle is equipped with a WCM or WIN module, these contain that secret key that I mentioned to you before used for you know coding the keys and so forth um, a backup copy of the secret key is actually stored in the PCM which I found very interesting and this is something that you'll never see you'll never see this this secret key okay the pin code however is required to enter the security access mode to permit any uh, coding function so that's something you will see okay and um, you can see here the screen and the wireless uh, control uh, module. This is between 2004 and 2014. The WIN module wireless ignition node 2008 to present day. And you'll see a lot of these on the vehicles on the road. And then you'll have your, your keyless go. And your keyless go is basically your start stop button that replaces the traditional key with a special FOBIC. And FOBIC stands for finger operated button integrated key. Okay, and lastly, we have your smart start. Now, your smart start systems are is pretty much the same as the keyless go, but it does not have a win module. Okay, so let me ask you guys something. There's a lot of different um, components when you're replacing, you know, modules on the Chrysler's. How do you know what procedures to do after you install, let's say, a PCM module? Let's say you install a PCM and a skim module. How are you going to know what to do? If you don't really know, you could really end up screwing up the vehicle. So this is what I recommend doing. If you go to your service information, okay, they're going to have a module replacement guide. And the way this um, works is the little gears that are white, that means that's the existing part that's you know already on the vehicle. The ones in green represents the part that's being replaced, the new part. So let's just say, for example, I lost all my keys. All right, just so you can see that will be condition one because the PCM is still there, the WCM is still there, and then we have the keys. And all we do is just go down to the programming order and you'll see we can use a scan tool to program the key fobs. Um, let's say we uh, had a bad PCM module, a, da a bad WCM module, and also a bad Fobic, then we'll do, do condition three. And you just go down and you just, on the scan tool, run these procedures. So in this, let's say a case study, we just replaced the PCM. So that's gonna be condition five. And you can see here, if we go down, all we need to do is go on the scanner and do the PCM replace procedure. So this is how you'll know what to do um, in terms of your, your programming order after you put on a module okay so let's go ahead to the vehicle and uh, get this thing configured so this is going to be your setup now we don't need the xp 400 but if you haven't purchased one of these tools you're not supposed to plug this into the obd port this is how the connection is going to be okay and then as a rule of thumb it's good to connect your j2534 uh, direct with the USB cable. Now, in terms of the PCM location, it's kind of in an awkward spot. But uh, the way we're going to take it off is you have to disconnect the negative battery cable. We're going to lift the vehicle up, and you can see on step three, remove the push pin and reposition the PCM access cover. Step four, unlock and disconnect the electrical connectors from the powertrain control module. 
And step five, remove the three bolts and the PCM module. So now we're to our scanner and this is how we're going to get in there. We're gonna go ahead and identify the vehicle. Click accept, accept. All right, let's go to Chrysler. Okay. All right, so we're gonna let this load. And we're gonna to go to automatic selection, which is gonna automatically pick up the vehicle. So turn on the ignition. All right, so this is a FOBIC key. So we're gonna click FOBIC. And we're gonna follow the prompts. All right, almost there. So we're gonna do it one more time. So this is reading the password. And what's great is you don't need to take a picture of this. This password is gonna be stuck into the system. So when we go forward and do any immobilizer procedures that require the password, it's already gonna be populated for you. So the first thing I recommend doing is going to the email status scan. Now, the reason why I do this is because this is going to scan all the important modules related to the immobilizer system. All these are vital for the immobilizer system. And the reason why they're doing this is if you have certain faults, let's say on your PCM module that are not immobilizer related, you probably won't be able to do the key coding procedure until you, let's say, remove those faults. Um, then you'll be able to proceed with the key coding procedure. All right, so we scan the vehicle. We have the module in the car now. Let's go to replace components. All right, so it takes us to this menu and then we're gonna go to powertrain control module replaced. All right, got that done. Establishing vehicle communication. So this is just a prompt. This function is only to activate initial email parts after the replacement of the email module. Sorry, so, or to synchronize the VIN code and the email data. All right, if you wanna change the VIN directly, it tells us where to go. The engine ECM PCM must be programmed before you start the engine control module replacement. Do you wanna continue? We're gonna click yes. All right, so once we do that, we're gonna get another prompt. All right, so it's just basically telling us um, we only are going to run this procedure if we replace the module. If you do this without replacing it, you're going to probably end up uh, need to purchase new keys and, and, and code them. So only do this procedure if you replace the PCM. All right, so it's going to be retrieving the VIN pretty soon. Okay, reading the VIN. So current VIN in the wireless control module is that right there. And to update the current VIN in the in the current PCM press OK. So it's taking, it read the WCM module and it's gonna transfer that VIN and that secret code into the PCM. So let's click OK. Writing the VIN. All right. Now, that was successful. Now, you can start the car at this point, but you might see there's a security light on on the dash. So let's go ahead and attempt to remove that. All right, let's rescan the vehicle. Click OK. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and let this thing do its job. It's about 30%. Okay, 50, 60%. All right, almost done. All right, so once this is done, I'm gonna go up to the 
WCM module. All right, let's go ahead and check what's in here. Okay, okay, okay. So we have a B2205 original VIN mismatch uh, or missing or mismatch. So let's go ahead and try to clear this. Okay, click OK. All right, so the end result is it's a hard fault. Now, if this happens, if you're not able to get rid of this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna exit out of here because what we need to do is reset the, uh, I think it's the BCM module. All right, so let's exit all the way out of here. All right, keep on going. Just bear with me, guys. <laughs> we'll get there. All right, okay. Okay, so we're out of there now. So let's go to the diagnostic menu, which you'll see here. And then uh, let's go ahead and check to see if that VIN was successfully written. Okay. So it's scanning. We'll go Chrysler. All right, we're gonna accept the terms and agreement. Let it do its thing. Okay, so there's our VIN. Okay, and that's just a summary of the vehicle. Now the fun part. So let's go to diagnosis. We're going to go to control unit. We're going to go to body. And then on the lower left here, you can see wireless control. We're going to click that. And if we scroll down, we're going to see special functions. And right here, reset ECU. So once we do that, we're going to click OK. And the ECU has been reset. And then when you check, that security light should be gone. And then from there, you can start the vehicle. And everybody's happy. All right. So what I want you to remember, make sure the donor PCM part number is exactly the same as the original PCM part number. Very important. The other thing is before you purchase your donor module, make sure beforehand that if that donor module came with a black key, which indicates it's a security key, or if it came with a gray key, which is a non-security key, okay? Third, refer to Chrysler's module replacement guide to know the full procedures after a module has been replaced. Fourth, learn the Chrysler immobilizer systems to help identify the correct strategy when placing uh, modules and doing the key coding. And lastly, after a PCM module has been replaced and the security light is still on, go to the control unit, body, WCM slash TPMS, special functions, reset ECU. Okay, so that wraps it up, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. If you like this content, please like and subscribe and let me know what you think. And uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of your Friday, guys. I'll speak to you next week. Take care.